Hello, guys. Good day. Today, we'll be discussing about chapter of our book, Consumer Learning Starts Here, Perception. By the end of this chapter, the student should be able to define learning and perception and how the two are connected. List and define phases of the consumer perception process. Apply concept of the JND. Contrast the concepts of implicit and explicit memory. Know the ways to help get a consumer's attention. Understand key differences between intentional and unintentional learning. So, buckle up and let's get started. Learning. Mean what is or can be known by an individual, the acquisition of knowledge or skills through experience, study, or by being thought. Consumer learning is a process, a process which continually changes and acquires new knowledge. This knowledge can be obtained from reading, discussing, observing, thinking, etc. Also, it is the process by which individuals acquire the purchase and consumption knowledge and experience that they apply to future related behavior. For example, the mother is teaching his son which books to buy. Perception is a psychological variable involved in the decision process that is known to influence consumer behavior. Perception can be shaped by learning, memory, and expectation. It is also the organization, identification, and interpretation of sensory information in order to represent and understand the environment. The decision-making processes undertaken by consumers in regards to a potential market transaction before, during, and after the purchase of a product or service. The other variables included in this consumer process include motivation, learning, attitude, personality, and lifestyle. All of these concepts are crucial in interpreting the consumer buying process and can also help guide marketing efforts. In the Philippines, in our culture, when we know that there's a sale in a particular store or branch, we immediately go there because we have this perception that we will be able to save money. But in reality, we are spending more because we don't actually need the product. Exposure. Consumers receive information through their senses. A consumer's sensory organs are activated by a stimulus. Consumers can actively choose whether or not to expose themselves to information. For example, we are exposed to numerous commercial messages while driving on the freeway. Billboards, radio advertisements, bumper stickers on cars, and signs and banners placed at shopping malls that we pass. Most of this exposure is random. We don't plan to seek it out. However, if we are shopping for a car, we may deliberately seek out advertisements and tune in when deliver advertisements come on the radio. Sensation. The stimulation of a person's sensory receptors and transmission of the sensory information to the brain. Sensation describes what occurs when a person's senses are initially exposed to the external stimulus of a product or a brand. Marketing. The sensory receptors of a consumer are engaged by a product or brand cues through sight, sound, smell, taste, and texture. For example, a blind person may have a more highly developed sense of hearing than the average sighted person and may be able to hear sounds that the average person cannot. Attention. Consumers allocate processing capacity to stimulus, the process by which an individual allocates of his or her mental activity to a stimulus. Attention always precedes perception. At
attention is the central process and perception is not at all possible without attention. The process of attention serves the various functions in the organization of our perception and other cognitive functions. For example, our attention may be quite high when we read the direction mentioned on a road map and quite low when a commercial comes on a TV. Cognitive organization is the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the sense. It encompasses processes such as knowledge, attention, memory, and working memory, judgment and evaluation, reasoning and computation, problem solving and decision making, comprehension and production. For example, this group of young entrepreneurs just concluded the huddle they had after exchanging and sharing ideas to improve their business. Assimilation. It is a process of taking in and fully understanding information or ideas. For example, a light brown, slightly sticky, sweet, round food with a hole in the middle is easily recognized as a donut. Accommodation. Something supplied for convenience or to satisfy a need. The process by which existing mental structures and behaviors are modified to adapt to new experiences. For example, in New Orleans, a tourist may encounter a beignet which is a French donut because the beignet does not have a hole. The tourist perceptual process may have to make an exception to the rule that all donuts have holes. Contrast. The state of being strikingly different from something else, typically something in juxtaposition or close association, simply indicating that a person was altered by his or her purchasing behavior does not in fact explain why. For example, in 1990s, when Palabok first went public, it was known to be in white color and contained white sauce, but as time went by, from different recipes to another, it's now famous to be orange, in color with orange sauce. Now, people will find it unusual to see or eat white palabok because we have been accustomed to the orange palabok already. Selective exposure is a theory within the practice of psychology of news and media and communication that historically refers to individuals' tendency to favor information which reinforces their pre-existing views while avoiding contradictory information. For example, fast forwarding through commercials or turning off the sound during commercials. Selective attention. The allocation of cognitive capacity to object or task. Consumers selectively focus attention on relevant information. Consumers exposed to something surprising, novel, threatening, or unexpected. For example, this girl who wants to buy makeup, therefore, she will only look for advertisements about makeup products so that she will be able to choose the best brand to buy. Selective distortion. A tendency to interpret information in ways which reinforce existing attitudes or beliefs. The tendency to interpret information in what way that will support what one already believes. For example, sports fans provide good examples of selective distortion. Fans from one team may be enraged with a bad call, goes against their team. Fans for the other team are unlikely to comprehend the controversial play in the same way. Both set of fans observe the same thing but comprehend and react differently. Subliminal processing. 
literally below threshold contrary to supraliminal stimuli or above threshold. Are any sensory stimuli below an individual's threshold for conscious perception? For example, one print ad for Coca-Cola featured frost that some argued was subtly shaped in the image of a naked woman on a top of a can. Presumably, the image will shift the perception of a drink and make it more attractive to the target market. Absolute threshold. It is the lowest level at which a stimulus can be detected 50% of the time. For example, using the BMW, a high-performance car, let's consider a guy who buys a BMW, a guy who really loves his car for the sheer feel of power as he moves onto the highway. His absolute threshold involves the fact that he won't buy a car that isn't known as a performance car, that doesn't at least have the reputation of being a performance car. Subliminal persuasion. The idea that stimuli are presented below the level of conscious awareness might influence behavior and feelings. The most famous example of subliminal persuasion involves a researcher for an ad firm who claimed that he had embedded subliminal frames within the movie Picnic in a New Jersey movie theater several years ago. A very brief embeds of the phrases, drink Coke and eat popcorn, were supposedly placed in the movie the researcher claimed that popcorn sales rose nearly 60% as a result and that Coke sales rose nearly 20%. This experiment is often called vicarious experiment. Just noticeable difference. The minimum amount of difference in the intensity of a stimulus that can be detected 50% of the time. For example, Imagine that you're in a dark movie theater, the house lights slowly start to turn on, and you immediately notice even a very small change in the light intensity. Afterwards, you leave the theater and head outside where the sun is shining brightly. If the same changes in light intensity were made outside, you might be less likely to notice them since the stimulus level is much higher. Weber's law. As the intensity of the stimulus increases, the ability of a person to detect a difference between the two levels of the stimulus decreases. For example, if the price of a half gallon container of premium squeeze orange juice is $5.50, most consumers will probably not notice an increase in 25 cents. And it may take an increase of 50 cents or more before a differential in price will be noticed. However, a 50 cent increase in the price of gasoline will be noticed very quickly by consumers because it is a significant percentage of the initial cost of gasoline. J and B, just meaningful difference. A meaningful difference is one that is considered to be important. One that provides a brand with a meaning that is least likely to have an influence on a person. We can notice major changes for this product mainly the size, shape, price, and marketing logo.